This week, three sides of the coin, I pretty much dump out an entire giant bin of cassette tapes that I've saved since the 80s. Cool and stuff on I'm this, people. I'm going to start digitizing. I show you a lot of the stuff that I found and what's being digitized and what's going to be digitized. This is another going into the footlocker type of episode here. So is three sides of the coin talking all things kiss. I want to rock and roll all night. You're listening to three sides of the coin. Visit three sides of the coin.com. Subscribe on YouTube, follow and rate us on Spotify. Subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We appreciate your support. Three sides of the coin. Starting with three. You got Mike, you got Tommy, you got Mark. Where we end, nobody knows. Um, hey, check out Top of Rotation today. A brand new Lick It Up Kiss t-shirt from Kiss Online. Nice. Very cool. Showed up like in less than a week after ordering it. And I like it. I like it. I like just having the tank on the front. I got enough. I got enough shirts with their pictures on it. I don't need their faces anymore. Um, so we're going to just skip right over. Not that I'm expecting Tommy to have anything ready, but we're not going to do any, any commenting. Um, Mark did clue us in. Uh, his lovely hostess prepared food again and brought it downstairs to him. So uh, Mark shall be partaking in snacks through this whole episode. Quiet, quiet, Bueller, Bueller. He froze. I froze? No, Mark did. Oh, yeah, I was going to say Mark. Mark's having router issues, people, so just be prepared. But here's what we've got going for today. I've been posting uh, on our social medias that I got a cassette tape digitizer, which... I got to stop because I'm in the middle of digitizing something right now. My little digitizer. It's a Paul Stanley Q&A from Toronto, May 22nd, 1999. He's up there promoting Phantom, and I think he's doing it for some radio station. But I'm going to start converting cassette tapes. So I thought, let's... No. This is a <laughs> dumpster filled with cassette tapes. And there's all sorts of shit in here. Good shit, bad shit. But we'll start kind of going through it. Um kind of the stuff that I found, the stuff that's going to be in on queue here for me to convert digitize i've got and most of this stuff would be 95 to 99 ish in that era when i was doing kiss otaku and just started kiss online um i got a uh a early interview with ed cannon mm. before he was ever on three sides um here's one let's see Either of you guys know this name, who this is? Rich Dickerson. Does that mean anything to either of you guys? Sounds like a porn name. <laughs> this, Rich Dickerson, Bill Starkey would know this. Rich Dickerson is the DJ at the radio station that the Kiss Army surrounded. Nice. You. <laughs> you. You so, have opened up a treasure trove of stuff. Seriously, um, our, our listeners are going to freak when hear some of this I stuff. I know. So here is, and some of this stuff may not be a lot of new stuff, but like here is a Chris Lent interview that I did with him back in 1997. I mean, we'll I'll, I'll digitize all this stuff. Stuff like Chris Lent, since he's been on the show two or three times, it's probably going to be the last things I get to to digitize because it might all be the same. 
but like I got a couple Bill Starkey interviews from 97. He froze again. Look at him. That's fine. He's frozen eaten. Here, this this one could be interesting. This is from 1997. Tim Rosner. He was the tour manager on the uh, reunion tour. Mm. I, and, and I remember interviewing him. I don't remember anything about the interviews. So it's kind of fun to dig these up and go, wow, what was discovered? What was talked about? Um, I got a bunch of the guys from Detroit Rock City. Here's an early Dennis Wallach interview from 1997. Uh, Brian Hartley, who was the lighting director back then, 97. I don't remember this. This is Randy Best. I'm assuming he might have been the pyro guy on like the reunion or Psycho Circus tour because this was 99. But Mark don't looks know. so happy. He looks so happy uh, right here, doesn't he? Like if you could just um, freeze oh, him. And, Seriously, and, look. And I. What, Michael, we, Michael, take a look. You, if we froze him, he would look so broken. happy. You're, you're, you 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 freeze up every once in a while, Mark. Hold on, am I frozen right now? Yeah. Yes. In mid your video, your video right now. I feel like I'm Mike. I feel like I'm Mike TV. <laughs> <laughs> you are. It's like all my particles are going all across. Me. Um. All right. So this was a really. Yeah, if I'm gonna cool keep freezing. Time. I'm not gonna hang out here all day. Oh, party pooper. <laughs> Making up his all own right, rules again. Right. Jesus. Look at look at this one, guys. We talked about this. Bruce Fairburn. <clears throat> yeah. February 19th, 1999. I interviewed him about the Psycho Circus album. Now, sadly, three months after this interview, Bruce passed away. I don't know if this was his last interview, but it's clearly one of his last interviews. And for decades here, I thought I had lost this. I had no idea if I ever had the, the, the saved the recording of this. It wasn't found online. Nobody grabbed it off of Kiss Online and saved it. Well, I found it last week. Here it is. I burned it on. I, I back then I had burned it onto a CDR. I was able to get it off CDR. That for everybody next week. When we get together, the three of us are going to talk about this interview, and then you're going to be able to listen to this 53-minute <clears throat> interview with Bruce Fairburn. What about, all about Lisa? Kiss Psycho Circus. Is Lisa joining us next week? Who knows? Fair. She can. I mean, she's always invited, but never know if she's going to be here or not. It's more about whether she has time for us or not than yeah. anything else. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're just not, we don't rank up there for her. Um, but I listened to this, and I don't know, Mark, if you if you guys have listened to it yet, because I sent sent you guys the link. No, I haven't last yet. Last wink. Um, it's, you know, we go through song by song, and I do recall one of the questions I, I started with. Bruce, this is the million-dollar question. Can you talk about who played on Psycho Circus? And you're going to have to listen to the interview next, well, in two weeks when you hear it, to see what his response was as to who played on Psycho Circus. Um, but we go through song by song. And it's really a cool thing, especially we just celebrated the 25th anniversary of Psycho Circus. So, um, you know, here's the uh, producer talking about it. But let's go through, let me just start grabbing stuff here. Um, this is Mike. Are we gonna, Mike? Number one, am I frozen? No, I can hear you now. Are we gonna save the one cassette for last, the one that we were talking uh, about a few minutes ago? Um, well, do you want to build up to that one? All right, so here's what I've already converted, people. These have already been digitized. Take a long look at those. 
So I mentioned the Paul Stanley one. There's a Peter Chris interview from February of 1998. There's a Vinny Vincent, a recording of his Q&A from the 1995 Chicago Kiss Expo, which I think all three of us were at. This was the one where I was supposed to do the Q&A and he backed out of having me do it at the last minute, but I got the audio recording of that. Um, a Bob Kulik interview I did back in 1997. An interview with Dirk from the band Virgin. Now, we won't get into a lot of who this is, but this has got a definite Kiss connection to it. Not to be confused with Dirk Diggler. Right. Right. Who wasn't a virgin. No, <laughs> no he was not. <laughs> and then I had no idea I did this interview. This is... Sean Delaney, December 7th, 1997. That's this one, this one, we're going to have money to, shot. this could be a money shot because we're going to have to, we're going to have to do a fair review of that one before it goes up. Let me just say, Sean is not a happy person at that point in time. Not a happy, well, no, that's wrong. In general, he's a ha he was a happy person. He was not a happy person about Gene and Paul at all. And it definitely comes out in that interview. So um, I just I just finished digitizing the Sean Delaney one earlier today. I'll get that put together in a form that we can listen to, and we'll figure out what do we do with it. Um, but yeah, that could be that could be an interesting one as well. Um, here's one, Adam, Bruce, and Andre. Now, I'm guessing, because I know I've got cassette tapes, at many of the KISS Expos, I would record the Q&As at the KISS Expos. I'm guessing this is a Q&A at a KISS Expo somewhere. Adam Mitchell, Bruce Kulik, and Andre Augustine. Guessing it was an Indie Expo. I don't know for sure. Don't have the, the year on here. Um, but... I will get something like that digitized so we can check that out. Um, let's see what else. There's a tape that has no label on it. Those are always interesting. Stuff like this I'm not going to worry about because it's readily available. Like here's a recording of Kiss on Rockline and Motley Crue on Rockline. I mean, stuff like this. You can find most of this stuff anywhere out there. And I've got a lot of um, uh, cassette tapes of bootlegs. Like here's Take a Lick Take a Lick at Kiss from Wembley Arena, 1983. I'm assuming I just, somebody either recorded a audio a vinyl bootleg or I had one. I don't know. But I got tons of that stuff in here. Um Let's see. What else have we got here? Kiss, Baltimore, Maryland, 1989. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Mark, is that a Mark St. John show? No. I believe so. No, no, no that's, that can't be. That can't that's be. 89, 89, 89 would have been hits, Hot in the Shade. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if there's anything special about it. Then I've also got a lot of stuff like this because fans used to send this to me. Um, Kiss on WMMS, Cleveland. October 28th, 1997. Um, it's a one hour. I'm assuming it's an interview. I would get fans sending me radio station interviews, um, radio station concert ads, all sorts of stuff like that are in here. Um, let's see. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Like, here's one that is just KEGL radio station. Again, got to listen to it, but it could be interviews, it could be concert ads, um, legal exercises. Detroit, July 26th. 1998 jam 
Any clue what that might be? Was there a Kiss show in July 98? of 1998? Or would it have been, when was, was there a Detroit Expo? I don't, I don't remember. I mean, all of these tapes are labeled with no more detail than something like this. So a lot of them I got to listen to to figure out if it's anything worthwhile or not. Um, I'm guessing that would be the expo. Kiss you know, live on W really tough for me because you're freezing up on my end. You're that's because you're freezing. Kiss on WLS mm -hmm. Chicago Illinois. Um, I don't know when this was. 1979. So Dynasty interviews from the radio in Chicago. Um, Eric Carr WDHA. The Satanic Rumors special, a KISS interview. I don't know what that is. From 1978. KISS. KISS Satanic Rumors special, 1978. Now, that actually sounds interesting. I might put that to the it head does. of the pack. I'll put that to the head of the pack. That could be interesting. Um, I got some, like, Fraley's Comet, bootlegs like 1987 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, uh, who cares about an MTV unplugged cassette tape? Wicked Lester Sessions, who cares? There's Fraley's Comet at Lemore's in 1985. Uh, you got to remember, people, because timeline means everything. This is how you got these shows back in the day. Tape trading. Or you'd go to expos and you'd buy these tapes from somebody. Um, now, you might a lot of you might sit here and go, well, shit, some of this stuff is readily available on YouTube. You're 100% right. But 30, 40 years ago, this was it. This is how I listened to Fraley's Comet at Lemore's in 1985. I got a cassette tape of it. Something the Elder Outtakes Part One on there too. And that was before the album came out. And that was before um, the album came out. That was the only way to hear it. Here, remember this circulating. This was Carnival of Souls. This was the bootleg that we all had way before the album ever came out. That was the old Flaming Head artwork that they had before the cover that ended up being used. Um, all right. Here's like Indie Expo 1998, the Q&A and a Union Unplugged performance. So I got some live performances of stuff like that. I know I got tapes in here of like the ESP project, Eric Singer's project, because they used to do all these expos. Again, here's uh, here's how I listened to Kiss at the Academy of Music, 1973. It was on a cassette tape. It was a bootleg. And that's how we all did it. Um, here's a Bruce Kulick interview from 1997. Don't know if I did that. I don't know where it came from. Um One of my early Creatures bootlegs, Worcester Mass, 1983, on a cassette tape. I mean, you know, now this stuff is available in much better quality. Um, here, from Chicago, and I don't know what's on here, but I'm assuming it's an ad from 103.5, the radio station in Chicago. They sent me a cassette tape of some Kiss stuff. A lot of times I would call up... When I was doing my website, I'd call up the radio stations and ask them if they could send me anything. And, you know, some of the better and nicer stations would send me a cassette tape of whatever ads they were running or if they just had the band on for an interview, they would send it to me. Um, you know, I don't know. It just says Ace Demos. No description. I'm sure these demos are all 
out there in the wild now. I got some here, Tommy, cassette tape of Unplugged in Minneapolis. That's Here's cool. Un Unplugged well, remixed, in Boston. I found the video of that and I posted it on my YouTube page. So if you want to go to there, I should. I suppose I could share a link. I I videotaped the entire uh, performance. We did a two camera of it. So it's on there. If you'd like to enjoy it, I'll I'll put a link. There's an Adam Mitchell. I'm assuming a Q and A with him from 1999. Um, Eric Carr interviews, 91, 91. Another Carnival of Souls. Just more bootlegs. They only come out at night on tape. It's like Mark's going to be dumping on us because his his router's really acting up. So sneak attack. So it's just you and I, Tommy. There's another radio station, KTBZFM, Houston, Texas. Various radio spots. Mm, cool. Yeah, I mean, there's some great stuff in there. You'll just have to, you know, the thing I want to mention as we're talking about all this is I know that you guys will get excited to hear about these things. We try to get this stuff out, but it's like anything else. We both also have jobs. So it's well, like, it well, takes, yeah, it takes take, time this, to. This is going to take time because to digitize this, I got to put it in a cassette player. It's got to play at normal speed to go through the whole thing just to digitize mm -hmm. it. Yep. Then I got to edit that audio, put it together in a video. It, it will all happen. It'll take time. Mm -hmm. Here's but we're one just that kind I, of giving you a preview of all the cool shit we're going to share with you over the next yeah. six months. Here's here's a. I don't know if I'd call this an advanced tape more than a demo tape. This was for shopping a an album for a deal. Yeah. The band was called The Invasion. All compositions and guitars by Vinnie Vincent. The songs on this are Rough Mixes, Rocks on Fire, Nuke It, Truth, Shocker, Full. Full Shred and Invincible. And it's a management company. I mean, this is a kind of tape that, again, back in the day, they shopped the demos. Would, would, would be given to a record label as a demo to see if there's interest in signing them. I, like got, I got this from a friend of mine who worked at a record label who was shopped the invasion. Mm -hmm. So, the, for those of you that are familiar with that movie, um with the uh what did they call themselves the lone stallions or oh something like yeah that. uh what the hell is the it's name brendan of frazier brendan frazier and steve buscemi yep and uh, adam sandler yeah yeah so they that's what they they shop their demo that's exactly yep. what it is um here's another example of that Peter yeah. Chris demo tape. Mm -hmm. Now this is take a look at that. This is produced by Peter Chris, arranged by Mark St. John. Can we share that, do you think? Uh, I'm guessing this has got to be out there already. Well, yeah, but if you've got a beautiful copy of it, we might as well share it with everybody for the folks that want it. Recorded by Angelo Ar. Fury and Brett Newman, mixed by Bill Dooley and Alan Abramson. Again, mm -hmm. I had a friend at a record label who mm -hmm. got shopped this. He said, I know you're a KISS fan. Do you want this? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. I, I I got, you know, I got these tapes back in the late 80s. Yep. Early 90s. That's what makes so all of this so cool. And that again, when we were talking with the younger folks. Those of you that have been digital your whole life, this is how it went back in the day. They would shop demo tapes on cassettes. Yep. Uh, I can't believe I see. can't remember the name of that movie. For the life of me. Uh, I want to say Air Something. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. I'm going to look it up because I'm just. a lot. I, again, a lot of these are my own just live bootlegs of either recordings of the vinyl albums that I had, Lund, Sweden, Nashville, 84, Blitz, London, Madison Square Garden live. Um, I mean, here, 
Here's an audio recording of the v Vinnie Vincent bankruptcy trial. Ooh. An audio recording of the trial. 418 to 425, 1989. Uh, again, correct me if I'm wrong, people, but I assume this is already out there somewhere on YouTube. Could be wrong. Um, God, there's just so much stuff here. Kiss Airheads. on the Mark and Brian. Airheads, there you go. Yes, there you go. Kiss on the Mark and Brian show. Um, another Bruce Kulick tape. There's a tape, no label on it. Union Unplugged. Uh, let's see here. Nagoya, 1995. Vinnie Vincent, Oakland, California, 1988. Um, here's something that's just labeled Karabi Kulik. I don't know if this is a demo before Union or what it is. So it's labeled Karabi Kulik. Hmm. Maybe it's an and, it, like a live maybe performance. It could, or it, it could be a demo, and there's four tracks listed on here. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe this was before yeah. Union got formed and became Union. I yeah, don't you'll to, know. You'll have to listen to it, and then we can reach out to Mr. Kulik. If you're not sure what it is, there's, there's, hold on. Mark is trying to join again. So let me he see. He says he's trying to join, but he's probably just, you know. Here is Kiss on the Jonathan Brandmeier show in Chicago. Hmm. Uh, no idea. But I will, you know, I will slowly convert all this stuff. Again, yeah. Kiss, Kiss in Paris, France. Um, Kiss in Brussels, Belgium. Uh, let's see. I got a bunch of stuff that I had already burned to CDs um, that I will also digitize. Peter Chris, The Thirsty Whale in Illinois. I mean, this was like a bootleg cassette tape that I bought that I then burnt to uh, a CD. Um, here is Kiss in the studio with Redbeard. The very best of 30 years in labor, part one, Labor Day weekend, you know, radio specials. Um, this was cool. Not that this is worth digitizing. It's just showing it. Kiss rock and roll radio, not for production, advanced CD. This is what um mcgee sent me to hear this before it was released this was the advance of it um a gene simmons interview 1977 in montreal I guess that's a yes that i am still free no you're oh. uh, well you are right well, still now, free. Now, yeah yeah you are now you are um all right i'll see you guys next week all right later later There we go. Oh, Mark is so much fun. You know, and um, I, I, I actually made a cocktail, a beer with a shot, because I found that you, the two of you are a lot more interesting to me when I'm when, drinking. When, when you're drunk? Yeah. Um, no, here not drunk when I'm drinking. Kiss, the confidential radio tape show from 1993, and Kiss, mm. live in Los Angeles. Dodger Stadium. Hmm. Now, I don't know what this is, how I got it. I'm assuming it was something that was sent to me when I was working at Kiss Online. So it's probably just the audio recordings of it. Um, here is something that's kind of fun. I, it, this can't really be ripped. This is a... a handmade dvd that was sent to me um when i was working at kiss online I love the very that best of kiss ads and the 70s show campaign so basically you open you put this in as a dvd you open it up it's got its own menu in there where you can see tv commercials for the very best of kiss 
um, various campaign videos for the 70s show, stuff like that. So, I mean, was this commercially released? Not at all. This was prepared. And, you know, there might only be one or two of these out here that it was sent out to people that needed assets related to KISS to produce or do something. Um, let's see here. I don't know. Just says Paul Stanley, 1996 interview. Do we put this stuff out safely or will the dead guy create a problem for us? Um, well, most of this is, most of these are audio. So there's no music. And a lot of them are interviews I've done. So good luck trying to claim my interview with these people. Right. Not that he we know how try. he is. Oh yeah. Um God, there's just like so many interviews. Like here's an interview with Peter Shank, who was the the editor of Detroit Rock City. Um Carl Dupree, who wrote Detroit Rock City. Um I don't know, it just says Kiss Psycho Circus premiere. Uh, so much stuff here that I need to go through and literally figure out if it's anything super rare or if it's stuff that's already a million times out there on YouTube. Right. Um, I have no. Uh, Mike, I would think that Mark would know Michael more than anyone else. He seems to be really on top of all of that sort of thing this is a demo tape for the band out of canada called sire bob kulik demos from january 1991 hmm. i think a lot um, of this stuff will be very interesting to the fans oh no i think it will be too i mean here's another bruce kulik from 97 now i'm guessing most of these bruce kuliks are probably q and a's for, taken from his expos Mm-hmm. More than likely, that seems reasonable. Um, here's my Kiss Revenge advanced cassette tape that was sent before the album came out. I rem I have such great memories getting this, putting it in, they're back. and just going, "Oh my God, they're back! Finally, they're they're back!" Listen mm -hmm. to this album. Um. I mean, I don't know. It's just Kiss Radio interviews. 87, 78, 79, 78. Look it up. 88, 87, 88, 88 concert ad. Again, it's just so much stuff that I've acquired over the years from doing these websites where fans would send me these interviews and go, here, digitize them, put them up online. Um. Demos, KISS demos. Now, of course, most KISS demos are readily available everywhere out there at this point in time. But they weren't back then. Um, the KISS black box interview. Allison Steele, biography on KISS. Um, Let's see. Crazy Night, St. Paul Civic Center, Kiss 1995 in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, the convention. Kiss Magic Lisa Mountain, will like 1978. That. I've Lisa got to imagine like Lisa's that. already got it. I Lisa's going to get all foamed up about that. But she should already have it, wouldn't you think? Common sense, yes, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, here's a tape that just says. Bill of Coin, Chip Rock, Dennis Wallach. Do you have anything that just says goalie? Goalie? Goalie, yeah. Goalie, the goalie tape. Um, here, this is Kissarama interviews. Kissarama was that big Cleveland Kiss Expo that had like 2,000 people. It was a madhouse at this expo. Um. Something that says part two of Indy. Um, I got a lot of stuff related to the Psycho Circus comic books, interviews with various people that were involved with the comic books. 
Here's an interview with Adam Rifkin. Detroit. Eric. 72698. So that would have gone along with that jam. So that must have come from a kiss convention in Detroit in 98. Um let's see here. Nothing on that one. No label on that one. I gotta love these tapes that have no labels. You know, like, is it gonna be gold or is it gonna be trash? Um So many old bootleg tapes here. WYSP Philly, 1997. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Gilby Clark, 1997. It says... Stefan Gilby, Eric Singer. I don't know if this is an interview with the three of them or is a recording of a live show, because I think back in 97, um, Gilby Clark did a solo tour, and I think Stefan Attica was playing bass, and I think Eric Singer was the drummer, I believe. So I don't know if this is an interview or a live recording. Um, but the point is you have all kinds of really cool shit to share with our listeners. I mean, here it just says ace five twenty five ninety seven Peter five twenty five ninety seven what don't know. We'll set that aside because Peter interviews are rare. Peter Chris Pirate radio nineteen ninety one interview that's worth putting to the top of the pile um wvts radio special rock and roll over with kiss i am guessing this you know there's that rock and roll over vinyl radio special that's a very sought after collectible vinyl this is probably a recording of a radio station, WVTS, airing that, I would guess. So that could be kind of cool. We'll put that to the top. Completely blank tape again. I don't know. A coin, 1998. Oh, no. Um. No idea about that stuff. Let's see here. Bootlegs, 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 bootlegs. Bootlegs. I really got to sort the bootlegs out from the rest of this stuff so I don't waste my time digitizing bootlegs because God knows we don't need more of the same bootlegs. Um, being digitized. What else have I got here? Another Bruce Kulick, 1997. Boy, Bruce was everywhere. Union on WRCX. Gene and Paul, open house party. Um, and I also found a lot of my actual Kiss cassette tapes. Like here's a advanced tape of the Shocker soundtrack. That's kind of cool, well, just for you know history. I mean, and you know, let's let's keep in mind it's you know definitely got Kiss connections to it. Um, advanced tape for the EZO debut album that Gene Simmons produced. Psycho Circus advanced tape. Kiss Unplugged, Advance. Kiss You Wanted the Best, Advance Tape. Carnival of Souls, Legitimate Advance Tape. Um, uh, 
All right. And let's see here. Some of the CDs I got in here, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. Detroit Rock City CD single. Whoop. This is Detroit Rock City live recorded in Cleveland and Detroit. Oh, so this is a CD single from Alive 3. I remember buying that at a expo. Happy Holidays from Union and Spitfire. Do your own thing. So it's kind of a holiday single from Union on Spitfire. Here is the advance single for Within from Psycho Circus. This is what radio was at Mercury Records was sending out back then. This wouldn't have been commercially available. This is what they would have sent to radio stations or anything along those lines in very nondescript packaging. But that's the um, kind of stuff that I think has a history and it's cool to show so that yep. people can see how much it's changed just literally in the last 10 years. A hundred percent. hundred percent. Let's see. Some of those are just regular CDs. Here's a... Let's put the X in sex mini CD single. I think it's just, so let's put the X in sex and calling Dr. Love. See, it's, it's a CD plus CD single. Remember, you know, again, timeline. Back in the mid 80s, the record labels were trying all sorts of new formats to sell more product. They were making tons off of CDs. They wanted to continue to make it. So they tried these mini CDs. And they seemed um, confused, like they were guessing. It wasn't it wasn't like, oh hey, this is our path. This is what this people is want. Did. Yeah. Mm -mm, they don't I they mean, were like, guessing. Like here, cassette singles. Yeah. <laughs> Rise that's, to it in Silver Spoon. Oh, right, hey, go buy a cassette single. Yeah, that's Used to buy 45 lame. singles, buy a cassette single, you know. That's lame. I found a dozen or so cassette singles here. Um, here is another CD single. I think this is from Japan. I was made for loving you and Beth. And, you know, this is... All kinds of strange and wacky formats were being released back then that, you know, to this day have long since died. I mean, here's just tons more cassette singles. Actually, this wasn't, this is a cassette single, but it was an advance from the label. So here's the Hide Your Heart single on cassette tape that they would send out to media in advance of it being released. This version was never released publicly for sale. There is cassette, a cassette single for Hide Your Heart and Betrayed. Here's a cassette single for Forever. Forever and the street giveth and the street taketh away. And here's another version of a Hide Your Heart cassette single. And here's a Let's Put the X in Sex cassette single. Don't remember if I showed this on the last one. I might have mentioned it. This is a real 60 second radio commercial from Polygram for Kiss smashes. All of the cassettes, though, it's amazing how they did try to push the cassette single. Oh, God, yes. 
Yeah, it's crazy. But that's, again, timeline is everything because they're pushing product as you go, depending on what's going on. They want you to buy it in another format. You already got it on vinyl. You already got it on CD. You got the full cassette. Now buy the single versions of it. Um, This, again, is uh, a radio ad that the Polygram office in Edina, Minnesota, where I started going to get all my goodies from, gave to me. Smashes, and, and this is interesting. They call it, so the album, as we know, is called Smashes, Thrashes, and Hits. On here, it's hard to kind of see because it's faded, but right right here's the name, and they call it Smashes, The Thrashes, and Hits. And it's got... I'm guessing parts of three tracks because it's only a 60 second radio commercial. It's got part of let's put the X in sex, Beth and rock and roll all night. This is from November 16th, 1988. I've never played this. I have no idea what the condition of the, the, the tape is. It's basically been in storage since I got it in 1988. Um, 60 second radio commercial for smashes smashes the thrashes and hits so they couldn't even get the title right back then um but i got piles of tapes here to digitize i've also got some dat tapes that i found I used to use a DAT recorder for some interviews. And I've got an interview with Diamond Dallas Page, the wrestler. I've got now, I, I for the life of me, I don't know what this is. It says Got Milk, February 20th, 1999. Now, I was at the Got Milk photo session. I spent all day there with it. I videotaped and photographed it. I don't recall ever interviewing them, but maybe I did. And maybe this is the an audio interview of the original four guys at the Got Milk thing. I don't know. Seems to make sense, but you're going to have to listen to it. You're going so to have to listen to it. Look at all this great stuff you guys are going to be getting here over the next, what, three, four months. Yeah. I mean, here, this is. Michael just tripped Ace, on this. Ace Fraley. And Eddie Trunk, June 1999. I'm guessing this is, yeah, it's, it's Ace Fraley with Eddie Trunk and WNEWFM, New York City. I mean, this is stuff that I've had in my storage boxes for decades and in a storage room. Didn't look at this stuff forever. And now with the recent move, it's all in my garage. I'm starting to clean it out, sort it out. And yeah, you know, I'm finding all of this stuff. And again, I haven't even opened up the box with all my CDs in it. I've got boxes of CDs. Haven't even touched the many boxes of collectibles and toys and merch that I've gathered over the years. This is literally just the cassette tapes. Some of the CDRs I've burned, my Foot Locker. Um, you know, I haven't gotten to my boxes of Kiss magazines that have been in storage. I did pull all my books out. I did find two, four, six, seven Kiss eight track tapes that I had in storage. Um, and I'm thinking I've got a box of VHS tapes. Now, I'm guessing most of those VHS tapes have long since been digitized and are put on on YouTube because most of them are, are probably all VHS that you know came from KISS conventions. But I might have a small handful of VHS tapes that I was that I acquired while working with the band that would have been 
sent to me as here's a TV commercial or here's a special performance or something along those lines. You know, I, I got a vague memory of some cassette tapes of various Detroit Rock City TV commercials, maybe a, a VHS tape of something related to the Kiss Prowler car back in 98. I just got to find the boxes of this stuff and sort through it. I mean, my goal is anything unique to get digitized. I think it's amazing and you've kept all this stuff. That blows my mind. I don't throw you any found away. It. I don't throw yeah. any. Well, I'm going to start throwing away. So, like, no, no, no. When I know I, that, but still, that you kept all this stuff is amazing. Because you know, like, like this cassette tape of my that's interview 20, with Sean that's Delaney, like 25 years old. I'll throw this cassette tape away. Yeah, once you digitize I mean, it. Yeah, once I've digitized it, I'll throw it away because the tape it's. The the the, me, the media itself, like for this, there's no value to that. Now I will, I'm not going to throw away these advanced cassette tapes because the tape itself, the packaging yeah. is what's special. Yes, but you know I would agree. when 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 I when I've got you know an interview with somebody by the name of Tiger, October twentieth, nineteen ninety six. You know, it's the audio that's valuable. The tape, the plastic nobody gives a crap about that. That sort of stuff is going in the trash, going in the trash. Um, unless, like I said, unless it's a very unique one of a kind, you know, tape. If I find CDs that have long since been digitized, they'll go, this isn't going to go. I mean, this is one of a kind, you know, promotional marketing DVD, or the best of kiss ads. I'm guessing this was given to me by either McGee or the label or somebody like that. Um, but it'll be nice to get rid of, you know, a lot of these um, bootlegs like here, kiss Lund, Sweden, 1976. Hey, why, why do I need the cassette tape of that? I mean, it's, you know, literally just cassette tape of a bootleg recording which we all know all these bootleg recordings are all over the internet at this point in time so um you know there there's a ton of stuff that i need to go through start digitizing and make, you know, whether we just post it up on YouTube or when it's important enough stuff like the Bruce Fairburn interview, we'll turn it into an entire show. Um, but, you know, I'll slowly put all of this stuff online. I mean, the interviews especially. Who knows about the audio, the the musical yeah, I agree. recordings? I agree. Music, I agree. Roll with it as we go. But yep. the point is, is, we got all kinds of really cool stuff to share with our people. Yes. Because Tons of Michael, of he stuff. did all of this. So it's amazing he kept it. So you guys, you need to give him a big thank you for putting this stuff out so you can have a, a something to listen to. Now, and, and, and listen, you might sit here and go, well, who cares about an interview from 1997 with Paul Stanley? It's kind of actually cool because I just listened to it as I digitized it today. To hear him talk about stuff that's coming up in the future as we're listening to it 40, 30, 40 plus years later going, well, that didn't exactly work out the same way as you thought it would, or that was exactly, or you were, you were foreshadowing what was going to come down the road. You know, somebody asking, is there going to be a farewell tour? Do I need, to? I've heard rumors about a farewell tour, Paul, and hearing him in, in, you know, 98, 99, dodging that question because he knew it was coming, but he wasn't going to tell you. Um, 
it's kind of interesting to 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 listen back to this stuff and and see how things worked out compared to what they were thinking, hoping, or feeding us. Um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool historical value stuff here to 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 look back at all of this. Um, so let me see here. What was this one? Let's turn that off. This is like a Wicked Lester cassette tape. Again, you know, you might sit here and go, who wants a cassette tape of Wicked Lester? Well, nobody does today. But back in the mid-80s, that was some pretty freaking cool stuff to come by. Um, that was a so really weird. big deal because you couldn't yeah. find it anywhere else. You had to find it at conventions. Again, remember, this is before the internet. This is before downloading. So this is this is history. It's it 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 is it is. I mean, I'm glad we don't have to deal with getting it this way because it was a it's a bitch to keep and store all these cassette tapes. I'd much rather take a digital file than you know hold on to a cassette tape. Um, because again, keep in mind these cassette tapes eventually, like all tape media, degrade in their quality. And, you know, start getting hiss and everything else. So, I mean, I can't vouch for the overall quality of a lot of the stuff we're going to be posting. It's just, if it plays, it plays. Let's just count it lucky that, that it plays and then we can hear something. And, yeah, there might be some hiss in the background, but it's better than not having it forever is the way I look at it. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the go. point, though. That's kind of the point. We have it, so let's share it. Yeah, exactly. I got no issues, um, with Can Mark pushing out and leaving early. Well, we never do. I mean that that yeah. happens every that happens every other week. At least sure we didn't seems have to, like it. We didn't have to put up with the um meltdown on the show. Thank God, Jesus! It's exhausting. You know, dealing with Mark and his Ruda. Sorry, yeah. something was going on in Detroit, people. Yeah, sure it was. I'm sure it was. wasn't. I'm sure it wasn't Mark's issues. It was probably his. His um, I'm throwing all my cassette tapes back into this box so I can get up and walk out of here. Um, <laughs> oh God, there's just so many tapes here. Mm. I, you know, I could sit here and go after I've digitized them all. I'm going to have a, a massive giveaway at my house here in Northern California. And if you want to come by, you can yeah, take them. Well, either way, this is going to be really cool. Yeah, no, so. I, I'm excited to get all of this stuff converted and um, online for everybody to listen to. And, and Great. again, some of the, some of this is just, um, exciting for me because again like this bruce fairburn interview i thought i'd lost this lost it lost it forever and you know i'm digging through a box and it, there it is and i'm like holy fuck that's exactly what i've been looking for and you know it, it i was able to digitize it to save it there's just so much so much stuff here that i have to go through and and you know see see if it's worth worth the effort i think yep. most of this stuff will be worth the effort in the long run um you know i just got to prioritize what um what tapes i digitize for you guys first yep. uh, let's add these over here so i don't get my my piles all mixed up. There we go. All right. So I think the next one I'm going to digitize is just because I kind of want to hear it. I'm going to digitize the WVTS Rock and Roll Over with Kiss radio special. 
and again, it's it's a vinyl that might be out there. It's an expensive vinyl, but it'll be interesting to hear an actual radio station playing it. And how did the radio station use that vinyl disc? Right. So that'll be my next. Let's see. Let's, let's open this bad boy up. I just finished. Where did I put that cover of the Paul Stanley one? I threw it somewhere back. God damn it, it's in the box. And now I need to. No, here it is over here. Paul Stanley QA goes back in here. There, so I got six tapes already done. In about two days, I've done six tapes. So again, Cut us some slack. We'll get through this. Anything that's really super cool will go straight to the top of the pile to get digitized, to get edited, to make it available for you. Um, but yeah, I think there's going to be some interesting classic. It's funny to sit here and go, yeah, these are some classic interviews from 1999. 1999 classic, I, I guess. Technically, it is. I'm getting used to that now because everything is classic. And I'm just like, God, that was only, oh, my God, it's 30 years ago, 20 years ago, whatever 20, it is. 20, we're, we're approaching like 99. We're approaching 25 years. Next yeah, year, it'll think be it's 25 amazing. years ago. I think it's amazing you kept all that stuff because, again, we're trying to hold on to rock and roll history that's what this whole show is about yeah we're we're just we're 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 recording forever for posterity history that we can find mm -hmm. with know. those interviews with bruce fairborn or sean delaney whoever it is that's an interesting perspective at that moment in time what they were yeah. thinking yeah and again Listen to the Bruce Fairburn interview, remembering it was done in 1999, and now it's nearly 25 years later, and we know so much more about the album yes. than was being revealed initially in 99. You know, like I said, I asked him point blank in 99, who played on it? And he addresses that question. You got to, you know, we sit here now and we know everybody who played on it. People who played on it admitted that at this point in time. Yeah. Um, but back in 1999, nobody was admitting to much at all. You know, the the story was it was the original four guys on this album. So it's fun to listen to it with that sort of frame of mind of, Okay, remember, this is what was going on back then, but now we know everything differently now. But again, it's it's still it's still a cool moment in history of, especially Bruce All Fairburn. All this stuff since, is. Since, since Bruce passed away, you know, in 99. I mean, he'll never be around to talk about this album again. Well, and it's so bizarre to think about how that's 25 years ago. That's the hard part for me. Yeah. Is just getting used to that whole idea. Yeah, I know. We're old. 25 years. 25 yeah, years ago, Psycho Circus came out. Um. Okay, there you go. Okay, there so you go. that's 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 the next thing on my my task list here, and and I'm equally excited about this stuff. I mean, not that this is kiss related, but I thought this was fun. I actually found two cassette tapes of my old college radio heavy metal show. Oh, nice. That are from 1987 that I'm going to digitize. Yeah. You know, and I'll, I'll throw, I'll throw them up just for the, that sake of it. But, you know, it's just cool. I mean, you know, and there's stuff like this, like this is from 1997. It just says C2 road reports. I don't, hmm. I can have a clue what It'd be that fun is. to listen to that. So it's like I 
going to put that in and start listening to it and i'm either going to go oh god that was that's a waste don't even bother or like holy crap i don't believe i forgot about that yeah i got this i got go either way yeah i exactly some of this stuff could go either way it could be you know dud interviews you know again i don't i'm no, these are not interviews by me, Ace and Peter, 525-97. But what are they? I don't know. All kinds are of cool there, stuff coming, they, guys. Is some major thing that we've all got and know about? or I, Something I just, no one's I, heard. Something nobody's heard. I don't, I That's, don't it's an have exciting a fucking time. clue. It's an exciting time to be a Three Sides fan. It is. We're going to eventually know? get a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm up for you to just go listen on youtube or like i said we'll build we'll build a show around the entire thing like like i said remember reminding you next week we're all getting together and we're going to discuss the bruce fairburn interview and then you yes. will be able to listen to that interview and tell sort of like what we shit. yeah sort of like what we did months ago with a bob ezrin interview i did um that i had done when I was working with Kiss as well, where I had Bob go through track by track talking about Destroyer. And he talked, you know, briefly about Elder and Revenge. Um, but next week, we're going to get together, do a roundtable discussion on the Bruce Fairburn interview, which you will then be able to listen to in its entirety. 53 minutes of Bruce Fairburn talking about all the songs, song by song, and Psycho Circus. Him talking, you know, I ask him, like, are you a Kiss fan? What did you know about Kiss? Um, it, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be a fun listen. There you go. All right, folks. Homework. What I are you mean, most I excited kinda... to hear? Yeah, I mean, anything that I was showing you here, is there anything specific you're like, oh, God, make sure you do that one right away? Mm -hmm. I kind of have my shopping list of about a dozen cassette tapes that are kind of at the top of my pile to listen to. Um, But if there's anything that you specifically saw here and were like, oh, wow, that really interests me. Or Or you know what it might be, let us know. Maybe you can save me the time of having to listen to something that's a piece of crap if it's already available somewhere on YouTube or elsewhere. Um, that's homework. There you go. Uh, anything else in Three Sides World to talk about? I don't Can't think, think so. think of anything. Mm-mm. Kiss are in Australia as we're doing this. Final shows in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. Okay, that's it, folks. Three sides of the coin. We're done. Two weeks, you get to listen to the entire Bruce Fairburn interview from 1999. We'll see you later. Do you have something to say? Leave a voicemail or send us a text message. Call 320-515. Voices for three sides of the coin. Provided by LarryDavisVoice.com and by JessicaMarsVoice.com. That's Mars with a Z.